All right. I've seen like three to four main stages of like brand growth. So I've seen in each stage, different fear at every single stage. So the first stage and where a lot of people really want to skip, but don't understand how important it is, is just product market fit, just product market fit. And it's do enough people want what I'm offering is what I'm offering good enough to generate sales. Essentially all it is product market fit. Is there demand for what I have? And can I meet the demand? A lot of people at that stage, their biggest fear, honestly, is failure, which is so interesting because most of the time, the amount of financial investment is minimal, but there's such a fail, fear of failure that they rarely start. I just talked to a lady today, launched her Amazon business maybe two months ago, crushing sales, is running out of money, and it's not like crazy PPC spend. She's running out of money. She literally posted today, I'm thinking about shutting down my business. She would rather control the failure by closing it down on her own because she's afraid. She is afraid. Great business. Unbelievable. We always talk about the honeymoon phase of launching a business. She is in the honeymoon of honeymoons, ready to shut it down. Product market fit. Most people that talk to me, I realize are usually at product market fit. And a lot of their questions don't have answers because they're just having to figure it out. They're just in it. They're figuring it out. It's the hustle. This is when you're hustling. When people say like, what should I do to get more sales? The answer is anything you can that doesn't kill your business. Product market fit. These are often the hardest people to serve. From a coaching perspective, it is the hardest people to serve. There are so many questions that have no answers unless you take action and you figure it out as you go. Product market fit, that's the first one. The second stage is just sales. Hyper-focus, sales momentum, sales velocity. What you've realized, there is demand for what I've got. Now I just have to put the pedal to the metal and get as many sales as I can. And I'm finding the winning sales channel or channels, and I'm pumping all of my money into that. Not what I see at that stage is shiny object, not shiny object syndrome. It is analysis paralysis. There's this new app that could help me get over here. And there's this thing over here. And this guru says this, and that guru says that, oh, which one do I do? Again, it's just like analysis paralysis. Just, oh my gosh. So what they end up doing is spreading their money thin instead of hyper-focusing their funds. And they start to see a decline in sales. And they usually blame it on the platform that they're on and do not take responsibility. Amazon PPC, you know, numbers are just getting more and more expensive to run. It's just getting more and more expensive. I just can't, you just can't afford it. Facebook ads are just not what they used to be. It's just impossible to really start from scratch with a brand on Facebook. It's just too hard. Google ads, blah, 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 blah. It just, those things don't work anymore. Justice, I heard something recently. Sorry to break your silence, do it. but it was shiny object syndrome is just an excuse when things get hard. Yep. Awesome. Okay. The next stage, and you can kind of say this stage and the other one is like kind of combined, but if you've successfully found product market fit, and then you've successfully focused on pumping finances into sales and just crushing and moving and moving and moving sales over and over and over and over again, the next thing is, is almost always the thing that takes you to the next level. It's usually your team. And I get that a lot of you here might have only one employee. You might only have two. It might still be you. The next, how do I say this? You have to be okay with other people failing. But then you also have to be okay with some of the people on my team are failing because they weren't cut out for this. And you also have to be okay with some of my people are failing because I failed them. This is a really hard leap because there are very few natural born leaders. It's rare that someone just has always got that decisiveness, that vision, that this is the hardest thing for people to get, the hardest. It's usually what keeps people from getting like maintaining a seven figure or going from seven to eight. I'm sharing this with you guys now because I'm like, hey, if they stay in this community and really work the process, they'll get there. And I want them to at least remember some of these things. Because when you get there, you're going to be like, I worked my tail off and I acquired all these skills. Great. 
Now I want this person to do it. And you ex- project your own <laughs> understanding and your own talent onto them instead of training them up. Or you're afraid to bring someone in that is more talented than you because you fear, well, what am I going to do with my time? I got all of my identity from doing all these things. And now I'm not doing all these things anymore. And not knowing what to do next scares the entrepreneur. It's almost like they get into this thing for freedom. And then the idea that they would be free scares them because they're like, well, I was the guy that did the thing, but now I'm not going to do it. And I thought I was really good at it. Now this other person's doing it. And what if they're better at it than me? Well, then they're going to realize that I'm an imposter and I've just been, I've just been floundering all this whole time and they won't let me lead them. This is the hardest shift for people to make. A lot of us have been the person that comes in and they're like, what's the vision? And then they have that, that person on the team that jumps in and just does their job for them. And they're like, I could have crushed this. I was ready to crush it. And it was like, yeah, because they liked it so much. Their identity was tied to your role. So they're not going to let it go. Okay. So all of us in here on this call, there's a reason it's a real, like I have so much empathy for people that are trying to go from seven to eight because it is genuinely hard. There isn't like a simple roadmap to leadership because it's all so unique. So about a year ago, I shut down my coaching, all of my coaching, other than like what I do inside some of these communities. I don't take on any like single clients anymore. The number one reason I did it was because I realized that a lot of the clients, it was like repeat. I was hearing the same thing on repeat. And it wasn't a passion of mine. There are coaches out there that just love hearing the same thing over and over. They love, and I was just like, I'm hearing the same thing over and over. This is not challenging for me. And and at the same time, what I realized was it all whittled down to fear. They came looking for an answer, but as soon as we removed the fear, the answer was very clear. There was like, it wasn't hard. Here's the roadmap for your success. You just have to deal with this. Oh my gosh, I see it. What do you think is the number one reason why they wouldn't do the thing that they all knew they had to do? You can put it in the chat. Christy says failure. Freddie says fear of failure. Number one reason, and they'd give a different excuse every single time, is fear. At every single level, every level, millionaires to the people that aren't millionaires, it was always every single time fear. That became really boring for me. And so I just was like, I'm doing this. Why? Because people don't want to face their fears. The ones that do, they do really well. They don't want to face reality. Things have gotten easy. It is easier for them to not face their fear than to face their fear. Because to face their fear, there's usually a relationship. There's a financial conversation. There's something going on. If we do this, we could go broke. That's what I'm afraid of. How do we hedge against going broke? Oh, this, this, and this. Well, is the reality that you'd actually be broke if you just did these things? No. Are you going to do X? Well, if I do it, I have to explain these things to these people, and I don't know what they would think of me. Oh, well, how have they responded in the past when you told them that you weren't perfect? Oh, they were great. Oh, so it just sounds like it's you. Oh, well, then you need to go ahead and face this. Uh, Okay. We'll have a coaching call, another coaching call, and I'll go, did you do it? Well, no, these things came up. Did they? So if there's one thing that I want by the end of this call is that we are excuse free here. It is uncomfortable. I encourage you guys to read, and I've said this many times, read the books of the greats and you will see them facing their fear like business greats and time and time again and doing hard things and losing relationships, really close ones having to come and humble themselves before people and ask for help. It's just insane. It's uncomfortable. That should be the name of all their books. This was really uncomfortable. Elon Musk almost losing his everything and having to ask his friends for money or his businesses were going to close. Telling them we're out of money. We have two months left. Not fun. Founder of Nike, not being able to pay some of his employees. Literally his closest employee saying, I just need some help on this. And him saying, I don't, I've got nothing. He would just ignore his letters because he just, it was like, we can't, we can't do it. Almost going out of business. I highly encourage you guys to watch the movie Air if you haven't already. Uncomfortable conversations. That's how Nike got Michael Jordan. Uncomfortable 
conversations. What did that do for them? Scaled their business insanely. Saved their business, basically. Read about Apple with Steve Jobs, the amount of uncomfortable conversations he had to have, the mistakes he had to admit he made. It's fear. It's all fear. We can name it all. Shiny object syndrome, fear of failure. We can call it analysis paralysis. We can call it all these things. It's all fear. And it applies to everything. I used to help pastors and talk with them about growing their church. Guess what is the number one reason why most pastors can't grow their church? It rhymes with fear. It's the same. I used to counsel people who were going through tough times in their marriages, who were close to divorce, ended up getting divorced, whatever it is. Guess what the number one symptom was? Fear. No coach wants to say this because you don't get paid more money by saying your problem's fear. You say, I've got a program and a specific way of helping you process through. Do you feel stuck? Hey, it's Dr. Travis Ziegler, and I wanted to thank you for watching this video. I just want to take a brief couple seconds to let you know about a free Amazon PPC masterclass that I have. Just head to ProfitablePineapple.com to sign up for that free Amazon PPC masterclass, or you can click the link down below in the description. I'll see you inside. Every coach knows that at the end of the conversation, when they hang up the phone, they go, how am I going to help this guy when he's afraid? How do I get this person out of fear mentality? How do I get them out of fear mode? Because all they can see in front of them is what could go wrong. That's it. They are riddled with it. It is the way their mind works. They scale to a limit and they are limited by their fear. Their fear will not let them hit the next bracket, the next income bracket. It will not let them hit the next thing. It is how their mind works. And let me just tell you guys this. If you have these kind of people in your life, get them out as soon as possible, unless they're like your spouse or your kids. And if it's you, if you're the person that keeps coming up with all the what reasons why things could go wrong, you need to change or you're not going to make it to the next level. I'm telling you guys, it is crushing entrepreneur after entrepreneur after entrepreneur after entrepreneur. It's killing marriages. It's killing churches. It's killing relationships. It's killing businesses. I've seen so many great businesses that have every opportunity, but because they're afraid of running out of money, because they're afraid of competition, because they're afraid of what will people think of my brand? What will happen? Do you guys want to know how to launch with a hundred five-star reviews? Do you guys want me to give you that real quick? Would that be helpful for you guys? Send a hundred letters to a hundred acquaintances that you have telling them that you launched a business and would like to buy them your product would really love if they just bought it, but are willing to pay them back. If they'll review and give you a five-star review. Full disclosure, profitable pineapple does not endorse that. Guess what? You could message them back and say, Hey, did you get my letter? Can I tell you about my business? Can I tell you why I've been working on it and what I've done? Do you use this? Do you play this game? Do you drink this stuff? Do you do this? How many of you have reached you to 25 of your friends and told me you launched a small business? How many of you made a post every day about your small business that is launched, that is active, that is going on? Forget even asking for a review. How many people in your community even know that you do it? Why? Well, if they found it, I did it. And then if my business failed, what will they think of me? Or all of my friends have all these other things. And now I'm going back and I'm building this business. And all of my friends have these corporate jobs and they're doing really great. And they just bought their lake house and they're doing all these other things. But I'm over here. Well, what will my mom say? Well, what is all this other stuff? That's what keeps the people from getting to the six figure level. They don't hustle. Why don't they hustle? Because they're afraid of what other people will think. And they're afraid of, oh, well, if I do all this, I'm not going to get the eight hours of primal sleep to make sure that I have the right testosterone levels. So I got to make sure I got to do all this other stuff. Who cares? What are you not willing to do to get a sale? Well, now I'm getting sales coming in. I've got a ton of reviews. I got all this stuff happening. Awesome. What's next? I got to make my first hire. But you know what? A lot of them will come in and they might steal my idea and just start their own business. You think they can outcompete you? Oh, well, they're not going to know as much about me and it's just really expensive. So you have, you, you have all this time now. Well, no, but uh, what if it doesn't work out? Some of them won't. You let them go. I'm just, I don't know. Heard over and over and over and over and over again. Some of you are afraid to hustle. You're afraid to hustle because you're comfortable. You're comfortable because you don't actually care about your customers. No one likes to hear that. Because if you actually saw your customers at the end of the day suffering because they didn't have what you were giving you, what you were giving them, would you still be acting the way that you're acting now? 
Oh my gosh. Guys, if I had an Amazon product right now, do you know how many of my neighbors would have it? I would find a way to become a community leader within my own little community, have a barbecue every once a month, have them over and just say, hey, you got this courtesy of me. People would be annoyed by me. Well, I don't want to come off as annoying. I don't care. People are also afraid. This is the, this is the thing that I see a lot of dreaming big. Because if they dream too big and it doesn't happen, it could really hurt. So then what happens is we will bring people on as coaches, mentors, we'll join communities of other people that are right at the same level of, as us and not the level above. And so they just tell us, they reiterate what we're saying, our false beliefs. So we're afraid of bringing people at a higher level into our lives because we're scared of them seeing our mess. So we think they're going to be rejected from us if they see our mess and instead show us how to get this mess out of our lives and move up to the next level. See it all the time. I talk to people and I go, hey, all right, we know what to do. Yes. Are we going to do it? Yes. So next week when we say we're going to do it, we're going to do it. Yes. What are you going to get done? I'm going to get these things done. Tell me what these things are. And they're always vague, always vague. I'm going to work on PPC. Huh? I'm going to work on my Facebook ads. For what? To what end? For what result? Do you know why they're vague? Because you can't fail at vague. You always win when you're working on your Facebook ads. Because if you touch the ad, you worked on it. If you touch the PPC, you worked on it. But if you say, I'm going to increase my conversions by 3% by next week, when you come back and I go, did it increase by 3%, you're going to go, no. And that's what people fear, perceived judgment. So then I have to ask, who are the people that you've surrounded yourself with that you're fearful of what they'll think about the thing that you're working your tail off on that would negatively judge you being imperfect at building this thing? That they would just be like, oh, you, you, you terrible person, you. I can't believe you tried really hard towards a really specific goal and you missed it. Is that your community? If so, I'm telling you, if you change that community, you're gonna feel so much better. So here's my question for everybody in here because I'm gonna tell you how to make this work. Because the reality, I'll tell you right now, the reality is you go, what is the cost of me not doing this? It's that easy. You have to fear not doing it more than you fear doing it. If you don't hit X goal, what happens? And most of us have created goals in our lives that if it doesn't happen, you're still okay. So you're playing it safe. You're not actually going all out. So when you look at the relationships you have around, when you look at your goals, when you look at all that stuff and you go, what happens if I stay here? What happens if nothing happens? And if you go, it's not too bad. Then I'd say, you're, like, you're not cut out for this. You're not cut out for it. If you're looking for ways to be safe in this game and you're not aggressively moving towards a goal that you're obsessed about, that's going to change your business and change the lives of the people around you in a radical way, you need to take a serious, all of you need to take a serious assessment if your life is really about what you're saying it's about. If you're going, well, how do I do that? Well, that's what I'm here for. You look at your actions. That's how I know a person is serious. I look at their actions. And if I look at their week and I go, well, how was your week? Well, what'd you do? And all of their actions are leading towards fear. And they're all fear-based. And it's all questions to me about how do I fix this problem? How do I do all this? Like this thing is going wrong and this is going wrong and this is going, and I don't know what to do. It's like, why are you doing what you're doing if everything sucks? This is where I see a lot of people. This is where I say like, most people I talk to are insane. If you've been coached by me in any way, in any group setting, then you know my definition of insane. Doing the same thing over and over, but expecting a different result. Those are insane people. Most people don't know that they're insane. Can I comment real quick? Please. If you feel like justice is talking directly to you right now, that is a sign that I'm trying to phrase this correctly. That is an insecurity in yourself of something he is saying is resonating with you because you feel that in some way. And we talked about this in one of our one-on-ones justice, but I said the last group coaching call that you did, I felt like you were repeating what we just talked about in a one-on-one coaching call. And he's like, well, that's, that's all on you. 
you feel what you feel whenever you're listening to somebody because it's resonating with you because you might have that insecurity, you might have that belief, and you might think that's you. And it's the same thing as think about in high school when somebody would make fun of you or even in college. You only take offense to it if you're self-conscious about it. If you don't believe it, then it's like, whatever. I don't know why they just said that. And so it's all about how you feel, how your mindset is and what you believe. So if justice, if you feel like he is talking right to you, that is because of your beliefs. And that's what you need to fix around this whole thing. Every time justice talks, it's, if you believe it, it's, you need to fix it. It's that simple. It's not complicated. And for me to say, it doesn't mean I'm good and you're bad. I've seen more businesses and like organizations fail because of fear than any, than them running out of money or because of marketing. I've seen more businesses die because of fear and comfort. There's a lady that I was seven figure business owner, primarily sells on Amazon. We get on the phone and her questions are about all the things that you think someone would want. Anyone that would come to an agency looking for help. I wasn't an agency. It was just, she was having a call and I go, well, what, what's taking up most of your time? She's like, well, I've got this competitor that's literally copied my product and is selling it. And they're, they've made a business, a full on successful business out of copying my exact thing. And so I've been reaching out to legal. I've been reaching out to this. I've been reaching out to that, trying to get them taken down and nothing's happening. And it's like the pain in my side. And I was like, why don't we just ignore them? This thing had become her new fight. She was more afraid of this business than she was of the fear of what would happen if my, my, my focus gets put on that instead of my focus being on growing my business that is a top business that's doing well. And guess what has happened to her business as she's been focusing on this other competitor that's ripping her off? Oh, slow regression. But guess what? She can afford to focus on that because she's built a, a nice size seven-figure business that, hey, kids, kids are in private school. She's doing all this other stuff. They've been working on it. They've got some systems set in place. So it might be a little bit more comfortable to focus on the enemy than to focus on, the, on, on what winning looks like. First symptom, small vision. That's when I know that someone's in fear. You don't need some kind of radical vision statement. I know when a person is radical. I know not everybody goes to church, but have you ever been to like a religious, different religious organizations? And there's ones where you're like, that guy really means it. And you go to another one, and you're like, that person's going through the motions. If you've ever been to a church where you're awake and then you went to a church that you were like, I'm ready to go to sleep, that's the difference. One person believes it. The other person is comfortable, they probably get a paycheck and they can go through the motions. Conviction can sell pretty much anything. Anything. We got a product of ours up to over 150 to 200 sales per day. And I'm trying to convince people to spray acid in their eyes. And it worked because we were so convicted on the product. And this was something that we were the second product to the market in this area. So doctors didn't even know about this product yet but we knew how well it worked and we just never stopped talking about it ever. And that's how we sold so much of it because we were so convicted on it and talked about it all the time. And people would call us salesmen and I'd say, no, we, yeah, we sell the product, but we're so convicted on this product because it works so well. And I always told them, try it. And if you don't like it, I'll give you a full refund. And you yep. should be that convicted on your product that you'd be willing to give a full refund. They don't like it. He believes. So many people I talk to, they're like, this thing isn't working. This thing isn't working. This thing isn't working. And I go, do you believe? Why should someone buy your stuff instead of somebody else's? And they can't say. They'll talk about the features. You know what the sign is? They'll talk about their product. They'll say nothing about the customer. They aren't radicalized yet. And they're just like, well, how do they keep it up? They keep thinking about how to make things better for their customer. And then everybody else goes, oh, man. Alex Ramosi, $100 million. How did he do it? Well, if you were so obsessed that you found a way to make everyone else rich, do you think you'd get rich? His top members had their lives changed. We don't ask about his customers. We ask about him. Bill Gates. Whoa. Well, if you got everyone an easier way to send a, an email so they didn't have to send a letter and could write books from a computer 
not a typewriter and made it extremely easy to create spreadsheets, saved accountants hours. Number one, small vision. Small visions happen because you don't care about your customers. So you always come in and go, you, I know when a person, when I ask, what is your vision? And their number one thing is the amount of money they want to make. I go, whoa, 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 that's great. What's your vision for your customers? And they're like, I know they start making it up on the spot. And I go, oh, you're a product seller. Got it. Got it. You're a merchant. Got it. Of course you're being outcompeted with. Of course you're struggling. You're just another product. Number two symptom of fear, insanity. I can ask the question, what have you been doing to overcome this thing? And it's usually all the same things. They just increase the uh, frequency. All it is, just an increase of frequency. Man, are you guys uncomfortable yet? Yes, yes, of course. This is why I closed down the coaching. Because I was like, I'm hurting people's feelings here and they don't like it. And I think I'm just telling the truth. And they want me to say it in a nice way. But I'm trusting that the people can handle the truth and know that I love them. Or I wouldn't be having this conversation. But then if I dig a little deeper, I notice most people don't have friends. They have people that agree with them. So the people that love you will be like, you don't care about the customer right now. What is this? So it's like, save them for the bar night, not for your growth as a person. Save them for the parties. They're great party people. You will have so much fun. Guess who you will not have fun with at a party? Me. You might. I'm not too bad. I, d- I disagree with that statement. I have okay, lots of I'm pretty good at parties. parties too. <laughs> I'm gifted. I can tell you truth and love, and I can party with you too. Look at that. Randy, that's a twofer. Just don't give you any Terry Blacks, or you just go into a oh, coma. Oh, man. I'll go to sleep. I'll go into a meat coma. You guys want to know the third one? And then I'm going to have some questions for you. If you're like, hey, Justin, this is enough. It hurts. I'm, I, I'm not ready for this. Just let me, like, we could stop right now, and I can just go, hey, what questions do we have? And then we can end the call. Before I give the third one, I want you guys to put in the chat, what are you going to change? None of this matters if we don't change. We love the burn, Chris. Welcome to the tribe. What are you going to change? We have to get out of fear. One thing that Alex and I were talking about actually just this morning, and we talked about it a, a couple of weeks ago as well, is offering more of a guarantee for the first three months of our agency product. And you know, I've been resistant to it, and I don't know why I've been resistant to it. I think it's just because it's a lot more than a $20 bottle of hypochlorous acid. If we have to refund somebody for three months of our agency fees, that's, you know, 10,000 minimum. And so it's one of those things I look at, I'm looking at the number, the financial number versus the actual product itself and the customer. And so if I look at the customer and how we can get them on the best, we need to make a hundred million dollar offer as Alex from Ozzy would put it, or a no brainer offer. And the challenge that we're going after now is going after people businesses that are bigger that have never heard of me. Yep. And so we're trying to come up with that no-brainer offer on how we can do that. And what would that look like? A guaranteed three months that if we don't provide you the results that pay for us, essentially, then we give you your full money back. Could be that. Give you a discounted rate to move forward. Could be that as well. So we've been working on that. And whenever I say no to that, it's because I'm thinking about the finances Yep. But if I'm convicted enough about the customer and serving the customer, then it should be a yes. Yep. Easily. Yep. And the funny thing is we just did that, like I said, at the beginning of the call with Randy and the inventory software, I was like, how could we make this a no brainer? Let's give people three months free, not even like a guaranteed three months. Let's just give them three months free, full analysis, costs us a lot of money, but I guarantee they'll fall in love with the service because it's that good. And so we reached out to four clients, said, this is what we're offering. And two of them instantly came back and said, yes, I'll take you up on that. Guys, it is literally like, if there is, let me ask you guys, what is the vision for your business? Put it in the chat. Just put it in there. If you don't have one and you're going to just type out something you don't have, just put, I don't have one. I promise not to judge you. What is your, like, what is the vision here? I'm expecting a response from everyone. If it's, I don't have one, just put, I don't have one. Thank you, Alina. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Melissa. Awesome. Don't have one. Awesome. Okay. Number one homework for anyone that doesn't have one, get one. How do I get one? I want you to envision the people that you hope to serve suffering. Why would they suffer if they don't have what you offer? Then put a timeline because a vision isn't a vision without a timeline. of When you want to see this happen, when will you know you've accomplished said vision? 
Most people create a purpose or mission statement thinking it is a vision. Our vision for the next year, if I'm looking at Christie's, our vision for the next year to see 100 new women hunters join our community and post their first hunt. Now they've got like over 8,000 people in there. So 100 is small. But like, what happens if you don't exist? What happens if these people don't have what you're offering? If you're like, I think they just go on living their life, then you don't have conviction. What happens if you don't exist, guys? I don't know. I'm just trying to find a way to make money. That's the problem. You'll always have money problems if the only reason what you're doing is for the money. You'll always be metric, looking at your metrics going, oh man, what's this thing? You'll be looking at the money issue. You'll never look outside of it. It's one of the biggest issues with brands that they don't have a vision. And the reason they don't have a vision is because of fear. And so people will say, oh, I've just got this like, money mindset, this bad money mindset. Maybe, but you're not going to get to a good money mindset if you're in a place of scarcity. How do you get out of scarcity? You look at what could go right. What would be amazing for you? No, for the people you serve. What would be incredible? What would blow your minds? What would make them go, my gosh, you did it. What would make them go, I'm going to write a letter. What would make them go, he didn't even ask, but I'm giving him a five-star review. We don't think about this because all we're thinking about is money. So then we're always living check to check. We don't save. We spend. Our savings is always dwindling. Why? Because we don't put away money. Why don't we put away money? Because there's always something I got to have right now. There's no future thing that I'm saving up for that's more important than the thing that I'm spending on money on now. And we want to be rich. Fear is at the root of it. I can give you all the, all the coaching lingo. Scarcity mindset, shiny object syndrome, analysis paralysis, all the things in all the books, and they'd all be right. And you're doing all of them. Guarantee you. You know why? Because everybody's doing all of them to a certain degree. But at the root of all of them, it's really simple. It's fear. Oh, well, we would have to sell our house, move into a smaller home, to tell our kids this, but this would give us the budget to really invest in this business to see more people's lives changed. Well, I don't want to do that. What, what will people think when they see me move into a smaller house? Oh, you're thinking about you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't think this was about you. Oh, well, I'd have to tell my kids that they can't do this thing anymore that's really expensive. Oh, oh, I wouldn't be able to party every weekend and go out with the girls and have margarita night. I'd have to do it once a month instead of four times a month. Oh, no. I have to move back in with my parents. Forbid that every week you get apple pie. Would that be so bad? No. What are we scared of? Perception. I'd have to ask Travis if he could help me, but he's probably so busy. And, you know, he's got all these other agencies and all this stuff, and he's really successful. I don't know if I can ask him for help. But he did just create this community. I got a call yesterday. This is my last thing. I got this call yesterday, no, two days ago, from a guy that was in a church that I used to pastor. And he said, Justice, I saw you on some YouTube video. He's a dentist. And he's like, there's this other community I used to manage. And he's like, I'm thinking about joining this other community. He goes, I want to know if it's up to what they talk about. I go, cool. What is your goal? He's like, well, there's this guy that I saw on YouTube. He was a doctor too. He had an Amazon business. And he was in this other community and I've been hearing a lot about it. I go, oh, you could just join his community. He goes, huh? I go, yeah. You see, fear drove him to build a business that was all about all the money he could get. And then he saw the guy that admitted that he had done that and then started a business that really served a customer. He said, I want that. I go, are you talking about trust? Yeah, you know them? I go, yeah, I'm in that community. Just join that one. I'm not making this up. This happened on like Tuesday. What's today? So that was like yesterday. When you live outside of fear and you live from a place of sharing what you actually need and sharing the mistakes you've made, it's so attractive. It'll actually attract the people that think the same way as you. When you're living from abundance, not fear. I'm not making this up. This guy called me. He's a dentist that's selling some kind of tchotchke product on Amazon. And he's like, I want to do what this other doctor did. When you live outside of this, things will begin to change around you. This isn't some woo-woo thing. But I can tell by the lack of vision here, 
of course you guys are going to suffer or see issues because there's nothing bigger that you're hoping to solve for other people. And so there's nothing that you're living for that's greater, that's worthy of the sacrifices of doing the scary things. So you're just living in the present. So this is my last question, then we'll go put it in the chat. What are you going to do for your customers that no one else is willing to do? Doesn't always have to be financial, guys. What are you willing to do for your customers that other people aren't willing to do? Second, you start thinking about them. Mindset. The more time you wake up thinking about them, 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 their lives, what's happening, the more obsessed that you can do, the more obsessed that you can live from that place, you will start to see things change and it will make scary decisions really, really simple. Not easy. Simple. The then question is, are you going to take that action? Make sense? If you enjoyed this video, you're going to love the Profitable Pineapple Farm. What is that? It's our weekly mastermind where we meet to discuss challenges in your businesses. We put you on the hot seat. We go over best practices and hacks. We go over mindset opportunities and much, much more. Head to ProfitablePineappleFarm.com to join us. Again, ProfitablePineappleFarm.com to join us. If we're not open at the time, just join the wait list. Hey, I wanted to thank you for watching this video and I picked out another video just for you. So make sure you check out that other video and what do they need to do? Do they need to like and subscribe? Yeah. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs>